nope, not me. <laughs> nope, not me. William, what are you doing? Nope, not me. I'm picking the winner of the bistro set. Ah, uh, don't tell me you put your name in at Garden Palooza. Nope, oh, not me. We'll pick the real winner next nope, on Garden Time. Me. Nope, not me. Welcome to Garden Time, and William put all those entries back in here. You oh. know you're not eligible to win. Well, it is true, but you know, we will be actually drawing the winner today on the show for this wonderful bistro set. And a big hearty thank you to everybody who came out just a week ago at Garden Palooza to celebrate spring. And you know, Garden Palooza is the kickoff to spring, and today's show is chock full of spring stories like our visit out to Margie's farm and garden today where we saw some beautiful annual spring color. We also learned more about the mason bee, the early spring pollinator. But coming up first, we're gonna plant some fuchsias. Well, it's also exciting in the spring because it's time to plant your hanging baskets. And I'm with Donna from Black Gold, and you have a wonderful project for us today. So what are we going to plant? Right. What, we did, what I did is got the containers I here. Love these. Yep. And what you should do is soak the coconut fibers first, uh -huh. and then you can go ahead and plant. And what kind of soil are we using We're today? We're using Black Gold all-purpose. It has a six-month fertilizer in it. Nice. So it gets a good, and a good starter fertilizer. All right, and so I see that you have two different sizes of fuchsias, and these are gorgeous fuchsias, but how come we're not just planting the baby ones, the tiny well, ones? Well, I wanted some instant gratification <laughs> and color right away ah. in the yard. So I went ahead and got a couple big ones to start with. Look at that. Oh, it's like almost done. Yes, it's almost done. And why wouldn't I just put this one in all by itself? Well, because when it's done blooming or slowing down, the other ones will take over. Ah, okay. And I really, I think I've learned um, you want a cram and jam in hanging baskets. Mm -hmm. You want a full one tomorrow. It looks like it's been growing on and on. Right. And so also with fuchsias, um, for care, we want these in afternoon shade? Afternoon shade and also too on your new new ones here you might give them a pinch right on the that? end and uh -huh. they'll bush out and you'll have so much more uh, fullness to them. Oh nice and more flowers. Mm -hmm, more flowers. All right are you going to start in yours? Yep I'm going to do the pink one in the middle of mine. All right. And I noticed too should we be worried that there's so many roots here in these pots like that? No we just fluff them up a little oh, bit. Like this? Okay. Yep. And really, they'll kind of push out they'll, into this new pot right now. That's right. These will be full before you know it. And so we also want to make sure that we fill in all these empty spaces with more of this lovely black gold soil. Yep. You don't want any air spaces in there. Um, and it's kind of nice to have a square pot because you really can understand where to put things, and it makes it just a little easier sometimes. The round right. pots are a little more difficult. These will be fun hanging in my tree in my side yard. Ah, nice. And then ongoing in the summer, um, we might have to augment that uh, fertilizer that's already in the soil. Mm -hmm. You might want, you know, as the heavy bloomers like a little more fertilizer. So I'd go ahead and recommend a water soluble. All right. And then I know the hummingbirds are going to be really happy because they love these flowers. They do. It's. Um, a couple different uh, flavors we have here, and um, you can buy most all the different flavors of fuchsias um, in your local nurseries. And speaking of local nurseries, there's a special day today with fuchsias. That's right. It's Fred Meyer Planting Day, the ah. annual annual event. Um, you come in and buy your containers and your plants, and we'll plant them up for you in black gold all-purpose soil. Oh really? I don't have to do any of the mess at home then? No, you can have it all done right there <laughs> and drive them home ready to put out. I love that idea because sometimes we don't have a space at our house to kind of make a big mess. We don't have a planting area. Nobody, so. every, not everybody has a greenhouse, Judy. <laughs> I know, it's, it's kind of nice you do. <laughs> yes, it's a very good event so if you're out and about today come down to any of the Fred Meyers and get your plants planted out. Well, you heard black it here. gold all-purpose. And that's the most important thing. So if you're doing any of your hanging baskets, if you're doing them at home, make sure you get black gold soil because it is the best one. And um, get your plants at any of your local independent garden centers or go to Fred Meyers today and they could just do it for you. Thanks so much, Donna. Thank Have fun. Thank you. We will.
Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most beautiful events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, and great food and wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, open daily 9 to 6, now through April 30th. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. You know, spring, it's all about pretty flowers, and so I'm with Margie from Margie's Farm and Garden, and so you don't disappoint when we come out here. They're lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And so we, at Garden Palooza, you had these um, on your booth, and really, they are just stunning. Oh, thank you, thank you. We love our watering cans. They're cute. We have a few different types of them um, with the shower head <laughs> already fun. on to water your flowers. Just kidding, <laughs> that's just for decoration. <laughs> See, make it easy. <laughs> make it easy for people. So we have a lot of these planted up and all different, we have all different colors. I think we have 12 different colors of them. And so we have them ready planted up or you can also buy them empty so you can be creative and plant your own. I know, and you have a lot of empty containers because you have a lot of plants that you can help customers make their own creations. Right, right. Oh, yes, you can come out and pick out your container and we'll help you choose what's best for your area and for the container that you choose. Ah, that is nice. So tell us about some of these pretty things that we can get. Okay, our first one that's in full bloom right now is our Euphorbia Diamond Frost. This is such a great, um, dainty, delicate flower that goes well um, with so many different mm -hmm. plants. All different colors will go well with this. Um, great for the sun, does well in containers. Pretty. I love that texture. It's just so pretty. And then coleus, I haven't seen this much coleus in a long time. Very nice. Oh, I love, so the varieties that we have right here are all different sun coleus um, varieties. One of my favorites is wasabi, Pretty. this beautiful lime foliage color that goes great with purples and blues, Ooh. orange, pretty much any color goes so well with that. Um, I also love our pink chaos <laughs> here, which is just a little bit different of a leaf. Um, and you get all those different colors. It's fun to plant and mix in with, with flowers. Because these don't even have to bloom because they're just so colorful. They, they don't. They're just the color and the foliage, which makes them so easy to care for and That's to have nice. in your flowers. You don't have to deadhead. That um, is perfect. Yeah. And what are these little orange ones? These are so cute. This is our vermilionaire. It's just starting to bloom now. Um, I just had about um, three hummingbirds on them this morning. <laughs> they love the flowers. Their beaks just reach right in there and get the nectar out. This is one of our most popular hummingbird plants. It blooms so prolifically all summer long. And is that for sun or shade? That's for the sun, and um, it does really well in containers and also in the ground. Wonderful. Yeah. And dahlias, you know, it's only April, but there's dahlias already. We have a lot of dahlias. With a couple more days of sun, we'll have even more. Um, we have our cute little dahliettas that we have, um, I think, eight different colors of. Um, we have some blue, um, pink, and red blooming right now. And then we also have our Dalas, which are a little bit taller, and we have them in all sorts of different fun um, variegated flower colors. Here's our red and white one that's just starting to open. And these are so nice because they're little fillers and you can just mix them with all the other plants that you have on this table. Oh, for sure. They definitely go well with everything. Um, they're great in the full sun and um, they'll bloom great all summer into the fall. Uh, and then do you recommend fertilization for these two? We do, yes. We sell here, we sell our Jack's Classic that does well as a liquid fertilizer. And then we also have Osmico, which is a great slow release that you can mix in with your pots or in the ground. Uh, well, you know, you can get it all here at Margie's Farm and Garden. Go to gardentime.tv, we'll click over their website, or you can also go to Facebook and see what there's, what's going on there. Margie, thanks so much. Have Thank a great week. Thank you so much for coming out. Well, I am right here with Don Sprague of Garden Gallery Ironworks. And Don, 
just just a week ago was Garden Palooza. You were giving away two different uh, things to win here. So we're going to draw those right here on camera today. And today? Yes, we. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and tell people who the winner is. Now you're going to do this one. Tell me what this one's about. This one here is for a fifty dollar gift card to Garden Gallery Ironworks. Wonderful. And we had separate forms to fill out while you were there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And we had a lot of entries. We well, you certainly did. So why don't you go ahead and draw that one? Let's find out Ooh. who that lucky person let me, is. Let me stir them up really good in here. <laughs> And okay, there it is. the winner is. Are you going to do a drum roll or anything? Well, okay. There it is. Virginia Marble. Virginia Marble, and Virginia. that's the winner. That's the winner. Fifty dollars. It's all yours. Now we also had over at the booth uh, that Judy and I were at all day long. We took the names for this table and chairs. Tell me about that. This is a granite set that we make here, a patio set. It's got a full, a uh, little better than an inch granite top on it and two very comfortable bistro chairs, a powder coat finish, about a thousand dollar value actually. And this is the lucky person that wins this. We'll both work on the name. You say Gladia the first Gladia Knowles. I think, it, I, I think it's Gladys Knowles. Gladys N-O-L-D Knowles. Yes. So there you are, if you are Gladys Knowles, you are now the owner of this beautiful new table and chair set. Congratulations. Now, yeah, right? But you're doing something else today that we didn't even know about till we got here to film with you. Tell me what's happening today that you're going to do. We have such a full event planned. It's unbelievable. We're going to have a fashion show at 11. I think it's 11 o'clock. We're going to start the fashion show. Uh -huh. And we've got eight or ten wonderful models and showing a lot of the new fashions that we're going to be offering nice. for this spring. And then at uh, 1.30, Linda Butler's coming in. Wonderful, Linda Butler. Yeah. She's going to talk about old time roses, clematis, how to treat your uh, your older plants nice. in a farmhouse style. You know, if you got an old rose that your grandma left you, and you got questions how to take care of that. Perfect. That's what she's here. And then we're also going to introduce some brand new clematis structures. Some for pots, some for in the ground. Wonderful. So you have a lot of fun things going on, but you also have some refreshments happening. Oh. Carol has another wonderful garden cocktail. Nice. We should name it the garden, the garden cocktail. cocktail or something <laughs> like that. But it's really going to be good. And then we are going to serve uh, some little mini uh, sausages from Vogettes, meatballs, some cheese, crackers, uh, grapes. Wonderful. And just it'll be plenty, plenty for everybody. And you know, if all of this, if all of this deliciousness and fun wasn't enough, you also have one more thing you wanted to mention about the two names that were drawn today. Yeah, this is kind of an extra bonus for them. If uh, the two people at one, if they call today and say that they seen us on Garden Time this morning, you know, and a friend can help them out. Sure. Uh, we'll give them an extra $25 gift card. Wow. Uh, for the two winners, if they call today, but they have to call today. Well, there you have it. So, you know, for more information on everything that is going on right here today at Garden Gallery Ironworks. You can go to gardentime.tv. We'll take you over to their website. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank, Thank you. you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. They had to take the car. They had to get it open with the jaws of life. Take me out on a backboard. Took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. 
Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Want a picture-perfect lawn this summer? If weeds and clover are taking over, Bonide's Weed and Feed is the solution to your lawn problems. And with Vigor X, it prepares your lawn for summer, too. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. I'm at the Camellia Festival in Newburgh, and it's really a wonderful festival, so many things to do. And one of those things that you could see is Ikebana, which is um, flower arranging, but it's really a different thing. So I'm with Nana, who's going to be here today. And so really when I say flower arranging, that's not mm -hmm. really the correct term for this kind of style, is it? Well, it's well accepted, so I'll go ahead and use it, but okay. it's more than just a flower arranging. It's really, like any fine art, it's self-expression. It happens to be traditional Japanese fine art using plant materials and more, something like this. Right, so you were saying too that really you don't even have to use a flower, you can just use natural materials. Yes, yes. It could be leaves, it could be wood, it could be anything that you, you find in that, that nature. Um, and so then how do you get your inspiration? Where do you get that from? It could be anything and everything. Mm. It could be a vase that the, your friend gave you or a piece of wood that the, your friend found for you. So it's really anything and everything. And so you put it together in a way that's pleasing and interesting and unique. Mm. Exactly. But then it's very subjective. So I love this. And you may not like it or you love it. So <laughs> it, anything goes. And yeah. really it has so much to do with um, your feelings. Yes. And maybe spirituality. Right. Yeah. It's a connection with the plant, but then you want to express it too. You're not doing it just by yourself. It's in the public now. So I have to show somehow to get connection with you. Ah, that is really interesting. And something so different than Western flower arranging that we see in a vase. And it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's maybe just on that level. So this is much deeper than that. Yes, and we talk about the negative space. Don't just fill it in. I mean, it goes on and on and on, ah. yes. Well, she is going to be doing some demonstrations here. She also has uh, workshops available. So you have to come over to the mm -hmm. Camellia Festival and talk to Nana and see her beautiful artwork. And so I am also going to go over and talk about camellias. So you'll be right back. Well, now we have to talk about camellias because that's why we're here. I'm with Collier Brown, who is a past president of the Camellia Society. And you really brought us just a small percentage of what we can see here today. That's correct. And can you tell us about some of them? OK, this is called Lily Ponds. It's named for an opera singer. And this one comes from Oregon. This is a native Oregon. Oregonian from 1955. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This is uh, very Japanese. This is a camellia of the samurai warriors. Uh, the flat petals and the huge center are very typical of Japan and some of its camellias. This was another one done in Alabama by a famous uh, Japanese uh, nurseryman named Sawada. It's called Sawada's Dream. It represents a lifetime of work on wow, his part. so pretty. This is a beautiful uh, Japanese camellia called Tinsi or Bokuhan. It dates back to about 1875. It came to this country, I think, in 1931. And this... Uh, that is th huge. <laughs> this baby, I'll just... That's my hand. Wow. Is called Dr. Clifford Parks. And this was a different species. This is Camellia reticulata. And it was developed by a retired college professor in North Carolina. Wow, and such a different range. Amazing to see all these ones here. But this year, there's even going to be more unique ones. That's, that's right. Uh, this is this uh, flower show is held in conjunction with the spring meeting of the American Camellia Society. And some of its most distinguished uh, members will be here. And some of them will be bringing their own flowers to show, as well as the ones we Oregonians have. Uh, so really there's so many to see here and that show will be a juried show and you can see all the winners. Well, that's just another part of what's going on, but I am going to talk with Erin <laughs> who's having a great photo op with oh, Miss yeah. Kitty. Hello <laughs> Kitty, which you can meet Miss Kitty here. And so Erin, what else is going on today? So it's an all day uh, free community event from 10 to 4. We have Lee's Lion and Dragon Dancers. We have Kotokai. We have Ikebana demonstrations. You were with Dana earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it's kids activities all day 
day, art activities, martial arts. It's just a full day of excitement and celebration. And it is so wonderful. I mean, mm -hmm. and the flowers are looking gorgeous this year. They are, and there are wholesale plant sales all day long as well. So, ah, yeah. well, really, you have to come out to Newburgh. You can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click all the times to come out flower day out here in Newburgh. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, <laughs> hello kitty. And there is the last one, Judy. Great. <laughs> now you might think it's odd that we are putting out wasp traps at this time of year, but really this is the perfect time of year to do it because the queens are just now emerging to look for new places to nest. Right, so you want to clean all the um, traps that you've had out all year, and then you want to put in the new pheromones. Now this will attract only the stinging insects that bother us all summer long, like yellow jackets and wasps, and it won't hurt the beneficials like honeybees. And remember to make it even more effective, hang several of them around your garden. Putting out your wasp traps, that's our tip of the week. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most beautiful events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, and great food and wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, open daily 9 to 6, now through April 30th. Why have a yard that looks like everyone else? French Prairie Perennials can give you something different by using our unique form of landscape design, visualscaping. We can give you a landscape as unique as you are. Focusing on year-round color and low maintenance allows you to relax and enjoy your yard all 12 months. On-site plant demonstrations allow you to see how beautiful your garden will look before you buy. Give us a call or stop by our retail location on weekends. French Prairie Perennials. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Well, spring pond care is about keeping that clear water, and I'm with Brian at Sugao Nursery in Woodland, and so Brian, you really have some tips on how to keep that water nice and clear all year long. Yeah, well that's right. Right now, if you look out in the ponds, it's, you know, the water's always so nice and clear, and it's a good goal to try to keep, you know, everybody sure. likes to <laughs> be able to see their fish, but I think some of the things to consider, you know, we usually, we liked water temperatures right around 45, 50 degrees, probably preferably 50, you know, that's when they're acting a lot more, they're coming out of their dormancies. But we have a lot of fish waste, plant waste, things that have died in the winter, and that's that usually that mm. sludgish looking. So there's a, a good uh, uh, natural way of trying to do this, and this would be all beneficial bacteria, so it's all, there's no chemicals, you know, fish okay. are pretty, you know, they don't like to, to be, you know, altered with. We, you know, even like pesticides and different course, things like sure. that, they're very sensitive, especially mm -hmm. if you're raising koi. But uh, the microlith PL would just be basically adding beneficial bacteria into the water that would help decompose or just speed up the process of getting that all down to the bottom of the, of your ponds. Okay. And at that point, you can either consider, you know, the sludge away, or there's vacs, but basically we just got to get it out. You know, mm -hmm. it's floating around or wh wherever it's at, it's accumulating, it goes down to the bottom. And that's where the sludge away uh, would actually speed up the process of getting rid of that just naturally. It just would be beneficial bacteria that actually kind of eats it up ah. and uh, you won't see it. So, or you can use a vac by physically removing it with a vac or whatever you want to do. All right. And then what about this group over here? This one here would be, well, it'd be probably the faster way. We have two products, Algae Fix and then AccuClear. These obviously are going to be chemicals, safe for fish, plants, and everything else. But it does the same thing, but in a probably more 
uh, it's would be a lot more, you know, obviously uh, the the oh, okay. earth friendly way, mm -hmm. organic, or just uh, a little slower process. A little slower process, natural. just like mm -hmm. anything. The, the natural, you'd want to use this more regular. This would be more quicker results okay. for the people that are probably less patient, but it works <laughs> fast. And we also, so it's the same thing. We're going to use Algae Fix. It's going to get everything down to the bottom. And then we want to go ahead and after you get it down, it's accumulated at the bottom, then we're going to want to get rid of it and then put back are with uh, the liquid bacteria, oh, okay. the beneficial bacteria to help balance or put back what we kind of depleted out of there. Aha. Uh -huh. And then what about this one in the center? What's yeah. this one for? Well, this one, there's all sorts of different, there's like three kinds of major algae zone. You know, there's one, uh, this, but basically algae is algae. This one here is going to be green clean. Usually when you see that string like uh, algae okay. that's always on the rocks of your stream beds, you, for sure. some reason it's always on the stream beds or the right. waterfalls hanging off the rocks or whatever. Uh, Green Clean is excellent product. Shut down the, the, the actually the flow of the water. So whether it means turn your pumps off or whatever, you want to have, it has to have contact to the algae, the string algae, mm -hmm. and then you just put it on, it turns brown or black, and it's gone within probably one day. Oh, wow. Start your, your uh, filter back up, get the waterfall going back. And the, this would actually be down in the bottom if it's a, uh, Eventually, it's going to find its way down the bottom, and then sure. we're again going to want to get remove right. that too with the you know it's a sludge, so it's sure. actually going to find its way. You can either net it out, vac it out, or use the beneficial bacteria to get it ate up. Okay, and then one thing more about uh, fish. So, is it mm -hmm. the time to start feeding fish? We always yeah. are like, when do we start feeding? Oh, and they are too. They're always acting <laughs> and hungry, and whenever you come around, but we you know it's probably going to be. The, the temperature we usually shoot for is right around 50 degrees. Okay. They, and that's when, because they'll come up, you go out there right now, the water temperature is probably 40, 35 degrees. And they're acting, you know, they're just coming out of dormancy. <laughs> so, you know, everybody <laughs> wants, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's best to probably wait at 50 degrees. That, right. That's the time that uh, everything balances out probably. Ah. Well, you know, really, this is the time to come out to Sagawa Nursery and talk with them about getting your pond just ready for the whole season of entertaining and enjoying your garden. Thanks so much, Brian. Yeah, thanks, Judy. We have a great kindergarten segment for you today. We're usually in the garden, but today we're in a kitchen and we're with Maddie Biggie, who figured out this wonderful recipe. And what is the name of the recipe? It's called Cauliflower Tots. And where did you get the idea? I got it from my neighbor. Ah, and she has a company too. Yeah, her, her company's name is Rootopia. Ah, and you won this cauliflower um, recipe competition and it was with um, Future Chefs, right? Yeah. Ah, and she won lots of prizes. So actually, you can use cauliflower. These are the beautiful ones. You can use white cauliflower, maybe make it a little bit unique with purple cauliflower. But Maddie suggested we make it really easy and we get shredded cauliflower from the grocery store. Great idea, because it makes it much easier. Yeah. So what's the first step? So first we have to get two tablespoons of vegetable oil okay. and pour that on. And Maddie, you know, I'm here with you in the kitchen. So when you work in the kitchen, do you work by yourself or with your mom? I work with my mom around the stove. Okay. You think that's safer that way, huh? Yeah. Ah. So what kind of heat do we need? Uh, we'll turn it on medium. All right. And then you pour in the cauliflower. And we have to cook that up, right? Yep. And you used a really great word. You used saute, which I think that's a very good term that all kind of chefs use. And so you're going to keep stirring it, right, with the um, oil. And then how long do we cook it for? For three to five minutes. All right. And then do you think we could put a lid on it? Would that help? Yeah. That'd... Maybe make it a little bit quicker? So we're going to put it on the lid, and we're also going to be stirring it, and we're going to come back in about five minutes to go to the next step of the recipe. So Maddie, now it's the fun, the fun part. So we finished sautéing all the cauliflower. So now what do we do? So now we're going to mix two. And what is this? Two egg whites. Okay, and, and I it, see a little yolk. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to add one-fourth of a cup of mayonnaise. All right. She's putting me to work here, so it's nice when you have a friend in the kitchen to help, don't you think? All right, next. And then we're going to add 10 drops of hot sauce. All right, and should we make it spicier than that or just 10? Just 10, and if you want it spicier, you can add more. Okay, I think I made 12, but that's okay. And now what? 
And now we're going to add salt. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, salt. And then... Pepper. All right. All right. And it the, just depends what your family likes, right? Yeah. And we're, we're going to add one teaspoon of panko breadcrumbs. Okay. I mean, of minced onions. Minced onions. Okay. Oh, nice, nice flavors there. And just mix them all together? Yeah. All right. All right. And while I'm doing that, you're going to work on this part. So what do you have to do with this? So now I'm going to add one half cup of sharp cheddar cheese. And then we're going to add one half cup of pinko breadcrumbs. All right. And we're going to stir that. Okay. This is pretty easy. I like this recipe. I like all the ingredients. I think it's going to taste really good together. All right, and so this is all mixed together, and then now what do we do? Now we're going to put this in there. Okay, so you mix it all together, and we're going to scrape that. You got it? All right, and so then we're going to make sure this is all moistened together. And then we're ready to finish? Nope, now we're going to put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. All right, so we're going to put it in the fridge to cool, and we'll be just back in a couple minutes. Okay, Maddie, we got this out of the fridge. It's 30 minutes that the, uh, the whole mixture's been in the fridge. So now what do we do? So now we're going to use this... Melon baller? Yeah. And we're going to... And you can also use your hands if you want to. Okay. And so we're going to... Show us. We're going to get a little ball in there. Then we're just going to rub it on the side. Okay. Oh, very cool. And then I notice you have this cookie sheet with this um, silk pad on. So you can use that because um, it might stick a little bit, right? Yeah, and oh. you could also use a uh, cooking oil. Okay, or maybe like cooking spray, Yeah. if you have that. All right, and so um, Maddie and I are going to fill up this whole tray with the cauliflower tots, and then we're going to put them in the oven, and what do we put the oven in for? We're going to put it for 425. Okay, for how long? For 30 minutes. All right, so we'll be back when these come out of the oven. Oh, one more thing, and then halfway through, what do you do? We flip them. Okay, so you flip them halfway through, and then we're going to come back and we're going to show you the finished product. Those are looking really cute. Now, Maddie, we just took these out of the oven, and so tell us again how much the temperature is. 425. And then for how long? For 30 minutes. And then halfway through, we have to flip them, right? Yeah. Ah, great. And now I see that you have some dipping sauce. What's in that? It's hot sauce, mayonnaise, and ketchup. All right, so I'm going to try it now. Now you tell me what I should be tasting here. A uh, cheesy, crunchy taste. Mm. Now this is the way cauliflower should taste. When we were kids and we didn't want to eat it, mom should have been making these. And now Maddie has this great recipe for us to try. So if you want to try it with your kids at home, please go to gardentime.tv and get that recipe and try it this weekend. Maddie, thanks so much. And you make sure that you call us if you have any other recipes, okay? For sure. All right. <laughs> great. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. At Garland Nursery, you'll find... Top quality plants. Four generations of garden know-how fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens.
So I'm standing here with Mitch and we are at Backyard Bird Shop. And normally, Mitch, we talk about birds because that's what you guys do a lot, but you yes. also do other things. So let's jump into mason bees. Um, I was not aware that they're kind of like our native bee. They absolutely are. They're, uh, they're native bees. They're native to the Pacific Northwest in the western part of the United States. That's one variety. There's also an eastern, east of the Rockies, variety of what's called a solitary orchard mason bee. It is a non-aggressive bee. It doesn't have a stinger. It will not harm you. And they've been here a lot longer than the European honeybees have been, which have been in decline in years, if yeah. you've been reading about that. So we like to encourage mason bees for all the good that they do. And when you say solitary bee, explain that to me. What does that mean, a solitary? Bee. Right, yeah, that's a great question, William. So they don't go into hives and they, they don't congregate in groups of two and three and four hundred or thousands. They really do their work on their own. They have a lifespan of four to six weeks. Um, they're active um, and around our area from mid-March through um, mid-June. And then, really that and then they are done. Exactly. Okay, and see, I've always thought that they were just a really, really super early spring, but going into June. Going into June, you're exactly right. So early summer. They're considered early spring pollinators, uh -huh. and they're super effective pollinators. Some studies show they're more effective than the actual honeybee. Oh, wow. So they can pollinate any number of flowers and early blossoming flowers and fruit trees and bushes, you know, pear trees, cherries, camellias, rhododendrons, those things that are early blooming, um, you will want these kinds of bees around to help in that process. So if, if, if our goal was to get bees, you know, into our areas, our gardens and everything, is there a way to attract these? What is the process of doing that? Yeah, so again, they're a native bee, so they may be in your area, but if you live in, a, in the city or the suburb, you may not have them. And so um, at the Backyard Bird Shop, we offer a lot of mason bee houses. And uh, the mason bees, they really, they uh, occupy a small hole in about this size. Uh -huh. And in nature, this would be the hole of an insect, of a wood boring beetle, or a wood boring insect of some sort, or in tree bark, or some crevice in a cedar shake. And that's and what they would use in nature. That's what they would use in nature, something like that. So we can offer them uh, something similar to that, where they can go into a, a tube like this, and the female, after she's finished mating, um, she will go and she will start uh, gathering pollen from various types of plants and bring that back and, and put little clumps of that pollen after 20 or 25 trips right in the, in the back of this uh, tube. Then on top of that pollen, <clears throat> she will lay a, uh, uh, an egg. Mm -hmm. And she can, interestingly, she can determine the sex of the egg when she lays that, no which is fascinating to me. That is. Yeah, so on a, in a tube like this, after she does that little process, then she will wall that off with a little wall of mud and then she will repeat that process all the way through here. So in a tube of this size, you could have six or eight viable mason bees. The females all laid toward the back and the males towards the front um, because males are considered a little bit uh, dispensable. We, we, we're, we are disposable, aren't we? We're disposable, so not fair, but that's the case, <laughs> is, the case in nature right here. Um, and then at the very end of this uh, tube, however long that is, um, she will put a thicker plug of mud to protect those bees in there from predators, whether it's uh, woodpeckers, different types of birds, or other insects. So that is really great. Okay, so now let's say that I, I, maybe I have a house already that I've had for a long time and see no activity, or I'm just starting and I haven't seen them. What do I do to, to start them in my yard? All right, well, that is a very good question, and, and a lot of people ask that. So if you're not sure if you have them, the Backyard Bird Shop at all of our locations offers cocoons in two different forms. So we have them in these tubes right here, and uh, there's six to eight bees right in, in those tubes. And I see tubes. the mud at the end. You see the mud. Yeah. There's a rough sort of finish on the end of that. That's very, very typical. Um, so we have them in that form right here. We also have the cocoons that have actually gone through a whole cleaning process by way of sand or water, and that's taught in our Mason Bee Cocoon Cleaning nice. class, but we offer them as well too. And you can kind of tell the females have bigger cocoons than the males, and, and we can talk about that a little bit, but we offer those at all of our, our shops, and that's one way to know that you're going to have a nice, healthy, um, uh, group of bees in your yard to help with your pollination. Excellent. So these are viable living bees that will emerge as soon as the weather hits about mid 50s for a period of a week or so. Now you said be, there's a lot of different varieties which you mentioned but is there a reason why you would want to use one of the varieties over another? Yep, not necessarily. So this is a, there's a, this is a typical one. If you want more bees you would choose a larger one but this is a typical size right here. And this happens to be a, a type of block here that you can actually take apart and clean those cocoons okay. and, and uh, later in the year in November or so. So this is made out of a composite of corn, a corn byproduct and plastic. And this is just a great average size bee house right here. This little guard is put on for decorative purposes, but also um, it protects from any predators getting in there. So it's really functional and it has a little overhang here as well, which is important too, so those bees don't get pelted by rain. Right, and then where would, 
Where, where would we hang them? What is the place that they should Great be? question. So um, they should be hung south facing or southeast or east facing. These bees, in order to become active, their body, body temperature has to reach a certain level. And so if they're facing north or west, they won't get that. But if you put them in the south facing or east facing um, direction at any height, doesn't have to be 10, 15 feet, anything like that. It can be at uh, eye level. Then they will become active sooner during the day, during the course of the day, and they will go do their work. And, and you can actually provide them, uh, since they are mason bees and they take mud to make those little walls in between each cell, you do want to have a, a some place where there's mud. Somewhere available. where there's mud. If you don't have mud, then you can dig a little hole and put some moist mud in there and that would be super helpful. Now, you might say to yourself, this is too much. I need, I need more help. You guys also do offer classes on this, right? We do offer classes. Yeah, we have two Mason Bee related classes. We have a Mason Bee, what I call 101 class, the basics of Mason Bees that we offer. And in the fall, we have a Mason Bee cocoon cleaning class. Oh, so good. some people come in with their houses or they come in with the tubes like this that can be unwound and they want to see how many bees are in there are viable or if there have been uh, parasites or mites that have infested those, some of those uh, cocoons. And if so, they can clean those and get rid of the ones that aren't good and keep the ones like these that we just showed you that are. So you can really cultivate a healthy colony of bees in your Perfect. yard and really help with that pollination, which is what you're looking for. Well, there you have it. So for more information, as always, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their website, find all the information you need, where their locations are, come and start a Mason Bee Colony all for yourself at your own garden. Thank you so much. Mason. You're very welcome. Thank you, William. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Check out our early blooming perennials. You want this color in your garden. Creeping phlox, candy tuft, and lots more. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong wind, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. <laughs> what are you looking for? Judy, I'm looking for the Garden Time Subaru. William, it's right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it too. It's as easy as going to GardenTime.tv. So click on GardenTime.tv and click on the Subaru. Each month the Subaru will be in a different location. Give us your best guess and you could possibly win. Each month, one lucky person will be chosen from all the correct answers. Prizes can include a gift card to a great nursery, some wonderful tools, or other sweet prizes. So go to GardenTime.tv and help us find the Subaru. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most beautiful events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, and great food and wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, open daily 9 to 6, now through April 30th. Your garden begins here at our local farm. My grandfather and father have nurtured plants here for 70 years. We breed Northwest hardiness into every bloom, and we take as much pride in your garden as you do. So when you're ready to turn your empty space into something beautiful, we're here to help by sharing what we know, inspiring your vision, crafting plants that meet your high standards. The best gardens begin and continue to grow at Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. I am at Out in the Garden Nursery with Carol, and Carol, we love coming out here at any time of the year because you have the most beautiful display gardens. Thank so you. lovely. Really worth to come out to this dry, you know, drive to come out from the city or wherever you live to see it. And I think um, today you have some beautiful plants. I don't see any flowers, but what is your philosophy with this group of plants? Well, I'm a foliage person overall. I think it's really, I love flowers, They're, but I look at them as a bonus. I don't <laughs> buy a plant just because of the, the flowers. I, like, I prefer to go for foliage. So I've picked a lot of things that here, it's very, very early spring, they're just coming up, but they're gonna give us a long season of interest 
with or without flowers. Oh, okay, so what do you have? So we'll start here. These are a couple um, Acteas. They used to be Simicifugas. They have beautiful foliage. This is a green, and obviously this is a beautiful dark. This is brunette. Um, they're a wonderful color texture all season. They don't bloom until September, October. Nice. And nice. then they're fragrant too. Ah, uh, and sun or shade? They're actually partial shade. Right. Um, keep them out of the hot sun. Little morning sun keeps the color better. All right, and then this one is kind of chartreuse. Yeah, that's the same. That's a triceratus. That's another one. Comes up early, beautiful foliage. Has a really interesting purple flower late in the season. Usually, uh, this one's about August, so it's a little bit early. But so you just have most of your season is just the foliage, and then you have a really interesting flower later and on. And it looks like orchids. That one's a gorgeous yes, one. Yes, they're really amazing. And then this I love because I don't even, I've never seen a flower on it. Yeah, this is an Aurelia. This is Sun King. Gets to be a huge foliage plant. They're easily three by three. I've heard of mature ones bigger than that. Mm -hmm. They are supposedly have a white flower and a, and a black <laughs> um, berry, but it's I don't think I've ever seen one either. It's Or it's underneath so much you don't even see it because you're looking at that beautiful right, foliage. But stunning foliage. Exactly. That chartreuse is gorgeous. It and is. then these look like ferns, but they're not. They're not. That's what I love about these. These are a runcus, and actually I like a runcus better than a stilbe's. Mm. Um, they don't have the color range when they do bloom that a stilbe does. They have little creamy white flowers. Um, they're much more drought tolerant, uh -huh. and, and they're much more you know, the stilbies, they get too dry, that's the end of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love these are a couple different kinds of aruncus. These are medium height, there's some dwarf and there's some large ones. And for as shade. Well. And they're shade as well, they're very okay. versatile. And then these kind of look like onions, maybe? They are, they're an allium, so they're okay. but they're more in the chai family. They're not the bulb kind, they're the more that they, well, I take a it back. Clumps? This one has a bulb, this okay. one actually is a clump. This is a little nodding one, has a beautiful little delicate um, lavender flower in May and June. It's a nice rock garden plant. Um, this is um, a, more on the chive side of the family. This is Tangudium. Has a nice big two inch lavender flower in um, June and July. Cool the bees love oh, them. And we do and want to talk about these. Yes, sure. the bees really, really love them. They come up really early, so you have this interesting strappy foliage now, and then you have beautiful flowers in the summer. Great, and a sedum. You don't even think about sedums this early, but they're so cute, the foliage. They are, and they come up early, so you have this foliage really, really early, and then of course they have beautiful fall flowers that actually hold into winter and just. Uh, and that's for sun. That's for sun, yeah, both them and the alliums are sun. And then another ferny plant. This is another, yeah, I like, again, <laughs> textures, things that look like other things that aren't those. Sure. Um, this is an Artemisia Gijou group. It's um, a lot of people know the silver ones that are mm -hmm. very drought tolerant. Right, right. Totally and, but, different. But yeah, totally different. This one is not drought tolerant. It's a sun lover, but it wants some regular summer water. But it's also a summer bloomer. So it oh, ends nice. up with three to four foot little clusters of white flowers. Um, sometimes I like almost the bloom process because it has these big stems that come up really slowly and then they open to these little tiny flowers. Very cool. But they're not real showy flowers individually, but in mass, they're very lovely and they're July, August. Oh, nice. And then you have a collection of hardy geraniums. I love hardy geraniums. It's one of my favorite plant groups. They're just so versatile, they're so easy. Sun to part shade on most of them. Some are end up like this is one that I just love. It's called Kamina. It's called. It's a beautiful um, foliage plant. It does have hot pink flowers for several weeks, um, but then it's just this really nice filler in the garden. Nice. And then this is Ann Thompson. This is Roseanne, which are two of the best geraniums on mm -hmm. the market. Um, once they start blooming, they'll bloom till fall. But until they bloom, they have beautiful foliage. Excellent. And this one hit with the pink. This is a, a pomonium. It's called um, Stairway to Heaven. So it starts out very pink, and then it'll end up to be a white and green cream with a little bit of pink and beautiful light blue flowers in May and June. Ah. Carol, this one has pretty dramatic foliage. What's this called? This is a Ligularia. This is Brit Marie, which is the darkest Ligularia in the market. Wow. That's another group of plants that I really, really like that I think are underused. Um, a lot of people don't like them. The slugs get into them and they're really Eight. sensitive for water, but they're such beautiful container they plants. Are. And they actually do have a summer flower, mm -hmm. bright orange yellow flower in the summer, which is really nice. And then all this beautiful foliage in between. Very nice. So you have to come out and see the other Ligularias that she has here. It's a great place to come out in the garden nursery in Molala and really come and stroll the gardens and have a lovely afternoon. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming, Judy. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Walking into standard TV and appliance is immediately an awe-inspiring 
moment. Not only are there vast displays, but there are functioning kitchens. To be able to stand in a kitchen setting and look at appliances and touch them and feel them and see how they work is a huge benefit for us. Whether it's a contemporary kitchen or whether it's more of a classic setting, it gives people ideas and gets people excited about the finished product. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Well, it's a beautiful day to be out here at Bauman Farms, and I'm with Brian Bauman. And I have to say, every time we come out here, it mm -hmm. seems like there's something new, something different has happened. Yeah. And this, this space we're standing in is really new. We're always looking at new ways of doing things. I, I think that's what makes life exciting, right? right? <laughs> Changing it up, doing something new, and we've, um, we've kind of redone our outdoor space. Last year, we had redone the parking lot, and this year, I'm really t taking advantage of that and redoing the outdoor space so we have more trees, more shrubs, more selection for customers. Because really, anytime we do something new, a smart person, which I know that you and your family are, will look at it and go, we need to tweak this. We need, and this yep. is part of the whole tweaking process. And learning and doing new things and giving a better experience to our customers. Right, and, and it, it works because when we drive up, every time we drive in, we go, that's new, that's really cool, and it cool. draws us in. Good, and it, it, it's great. We're excited, we're ready for spring. In fact, we got a few items that are on sale and a few new spaces I'd like to show you. So let's run over them and take a look at those, right. Ryan. So on our way over here, I, I did mm -hmm. stop at the coffee shop and got a delicious cup of coffee, right. so I love that. And then to walk over and see this new space, uh -huh. this is beautiful. Well, it, it's been raining a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit here and there. And um, we're always looking like we're talking about ways of improving things. Right. So we've added a whole new area of covered space to our outdoor, um, which is great. So you can actually shop, see things, and not get soaked. Yeah, and that's that's very clever, I think. And then you also have some great uh, a sales event happening yes. this weekend. So one of the things I always try and do is we try to work with the local nurseries. Right. And one of the local nurseries down the road, Obercenter, said, Brian, I've got some extra roadies this year. Um, can we bring some by? I said, sure. Um, but we wanted to pass on some savings to our customers. Uh -huh. So we have this whole covered area filled with rhododendrons and Pieris's Andromedas, and they're all 40% off this weekend. And they're beautiful. It's a great selection, and they're Thank all you. beautiful, and a lot yeah. of them are already popping into bloom. Yes, and you can find white to purple to red, you name right. it. Wonderful. Uh, which is great. And now, I think we have one more place that we're going to stop, though, that appeals to I, a whole different sense of what I, we are I have more stuff going on at Bauman Farms. <laughs> yes. Let's go over there. So, Brian, I have to say on the way over here, I love the coffee, but you even mm -hmm. have a cider bar now, too. Yeah, I, it, it's all about the experience. Right. We want people to come down and have a great time. And whether it's your cup of coffee is your cup of tea, yeah. or um, <laughs> now we have um, hard cider, there's a brand new orange blossom. Oh. It's just, we'll try it later. Oh, of course we will. It's five o'clock somewhere. Now, but I see a beautiful bag of rhubarb here. It's, it's a little late this year. Oh, really? It's very late, actually. But we just started getting rhubarb into the store. This is fresh and local. Um, and then the bakery does all kinds of great things with it from making rhubarb bread to strawberry rhubarb pies. But let me tell you, the most popular and most exciting thing in our bakery right now are these strawberry bliss bars. They're so good, I love them. <laughs> I heard your mom likes them too, yes, is that right? it's true. You better take some home or you're gonna be in trouble. Um, it's exciting, we've got so much stuff going on. In fact, Easter is just a week away. Right. And one of our big events on the farm is our Easter egg hunt, which will be April 15th and, um, this year. And that, the 15th, that's a long time to be doing this, isn't it? Uh, we've, been, we've been doing the Easter egg hunt for a long time, and it's, it's so much fun. Kids well, have a great time. And I'm sure that it is. It would just be a blast to be out here. So, you know, there's always something new out here. That's why one of the many reasons I love uh, Bauman Farms is there's a, a new thing, a new thing in the bakery, a new plant, a new place to shop in. So for more information, uh, you can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their website. You gather up all that information, and then you come on out and have a great time here at Bauman's. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks. Well, each time we get to come out here to Terracosta and we get to talk to Diana, I find wonderful new things. And Diana, once again, you walk in and you see this and you're instantly drawn to it. This is beautiful. So tell me what it is that you do this for and what you're trying to create here. So we created a few different looks here. Number one, we took a bowl, um, one of our decorative bowls. Right. We added some uh, faux succulents. Uh, you can actually use real ones if you have them planted right in the bowl and then you can adorn it with uh, some spheres, yeah. some glass spheres or ceramic spheres. Um, 
the trays we have are beautiful. These, they are. These uh, metal trays that you can also take the succulents and add the spheres to. Um, adding a candle is kind of fun. We have a, the um, flameless candles that are super popular. And this is one of our newest ones. And, and make a wish, William. And because just blow is, it out like normal? I, I think you should blow it out. Oh, and looky oh, there. Oh, God. Oh, that's so cool. How do <laughs> you turn is, it back on? So you, it's a push flame. You push it back on like that. Wow. But it is a blowout candle. But they're electric, and so they're safe in your home. And do people have the reaction I just did? They, I mean, everybody, that's so weird. Everybody not does not it. get how it works. It is really, it's really fun. We're not sure how it works either, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and then we took um, a, a matching wreath, Beautiful. and we have a table wreath stand that works really well. So there's really actually well. a stand for that? Yes, yeah. It's that's a, it's a very table cool. wreath stand. Um, we added some bunnies that we have some, this is a concrete bunny, so it's from outside, but um, we also have some little decorative bunnies and some birds that we brought in too and um, created just a nice colorful spring look. I think we're all starved for color. Right. We're ready for spring. I don't know about you, but I am really ready for some spring. So Well, and Diana, even though you went you went up with it. We went up. I like yes. that. Yes, and we took the lanterns up and we continued that look up into um, hanging lanterns with some vines on them and uh, they're decorated as well and that can change throughout the year too. And this really, you've created an atmosphere. Yes, I mean, that's, we try. That's what I love <laughs> because you know usually we think of a dining room or a, a, any place in our home as a place that we use specifically for whatever, right? but why not make it atmospheric no. when you use it? It is, it's a whole look you can create and we can help you with throw pillows, we can help you with the faux florals, the vases, the bowls, the trays, all the little things you can add to make these all super special. Well, you know, Diana, we talk a lot on the show about creating outdoor spaces with great atmosphere and feeling, but you really believe that this kind of stuff just should lead right outside. It transitions very well out to an outdoor living area. I encourage you to keep it undercover, right. um, but out on a covered patio, all of this can go on an outdoor table as well. But you're you're creating that that space that from your inside your home to your outside, and I, I think it's a great consistent look, and I encourage people to do that. Well, you know, I, I can't say enough how much we enjoy coming out here to Terracos and looking at the great ideas they have for both indoor and outdoor spaces. So for more information, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, find out where they are, what's going on, come out and enjoy the beauty of inside and outside your home. Thank you so much, Diana. Thanks, William. Thank you so much for watching today and a big congratulations to the two winners of the Garden Gallery Ironwork Prizes. And for more information about today's show, please go to gardentime.tv or check us out on Facebook. We're so thankful that you spent time with us today and we are looking forward to doing it all again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.